Welcome to Emmanuel Church of Intuk. Stay tuned for this week's sermon. Brothers and sisters, we've been talking for the last couple of Sunday evenings. We were talking about going deeper and the more. And that total surrender unto the Lord, which the Lord requires for us. Remember, I want to remind you of the great and terrible day when Jesus will return. You will find in that scripture that it says, and their hearts have left them. And I'm perceiving that the Lord is preparing us for that day. That fear will not come upon us in that way that it will come upon the rest of the world. That we will receive him with a joy and with a thanksgiving. Remember it says their hearts will leave them. And when your heart leaves you, I think it's this when you want to rather die, just sink into the earth and disappear. And God is preparing us for such a time. There's something he's doing in our lives. We don't know the bigger picture. We don't know the day he comes, but he's preparing. Maybe it's for your ministry. Maybe it's for your life that God is preparing you. Remember, there's persecution in us wanting to serve him with everything we have. There will be a persecution of the saints. This is a promise which Jesus has given us in the Bible. He said, they will kill him for my name's sake. That persecution is for the children of God. And yet we will always be at a place and say, oh, Lord, may that not come upon me. May you just come and take me before him. You know, that's the heart of all of us, you know, that we'd rather say, Lord, let that one pass, that cup pass me. Let it just go past me. But in the whole process, God is preparing us. Now, I want to speak to you about this thing that stops us from going deeper. This thing that holds us from stepping into that place of utter surrender. You know, as humans, we always want to have a little bit control over everything. We don't want to let go. There's always something we want to hold on. Who likes to be out of, that there's out of control? Who, who likes to be, no, nobody likes to be like that. They're so unsure. You don't know what's going to happen. And in the whole process, this is where God wants us to go. In his spirit. A place where he can, like a river, just take us wherever he wants us to go. So in our trials and tribulations, the devil he will send his, angel, his agent. He will send him. And that agent's name is fear. Whatever you have experienced in your life, that fear will bind you in a certain way. And it will lim put a limitation on your life. And we need to start recognizing the fear in our lives. This is what stops us to speak to people. This is what makes you think, what will people say? What will people think? We have been talking about the e-week is just coming. Is this that? Is it, Ooh, not me, not me, not me. I can't speak to people. I don't have. It's that same fear we are talking about. And I perceive that the Lord tonight wants to work with fear in our lives. That we can break forth from fear. Circumstances has brought us to a place of fear. We have to acknowledge this. We have to acknowledge this. Different fears. I'm just going to speak about seven of them. There's many more. And first one of I want to speak to of is the fear of what is going to happen. I want to speak about that fear. Or what will happen? That fear. Let's read Job 3, 25. Job 3, 25. And it says there, For the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me, and that which I was afraid of has come upon me unto me. My brothers and sisters, maybe it's sickness. 
Maybe that sickness you feared has come over your life. Maybe that lack of money, maybe it's that. But that what I feared most that has come upon me. Remember, what does it do when you look upon fear? When you allow fear to work in your life, you open the doors for the devil to, to work you. To ride you like a horse. That's what fear does to you. Fear works in numerous ways in your life. And maybe you are struggling. And the reality is you have a cancer. You have this thing that's taking you to a place where you know you're going to die. That's reality. The thing is, but is that God's promise for you? That is the question. That is the question. What is God's promise for your life? What are we going to believe? Many of us, we are just looking at the circumstance, just at the reality, but not the promises of our God, who is the yes and amen. He has a promise. And the question is, what is his promise for your life? Have you asked him, Lord, what is your promise for my life? Have you ever gone to that place and say, Lord? Remember, he says, doesn't matter what comes your way, I will provide a way for you. But yet we do not somehow believe this. We are looking at the reality. And God wants us to break away from believing what you are seeing. But you will break away from that. And you will start seeing that what he sees. There's something God sees. And he wants you to see that. And that is his kingdom. The Bible says clearly, first seek my kingdom. And he says, for those who are born again will be able to see his kingdom. That's God's heart for you. To see his kingdom. But that's unfortunately just for those who are born again. Only for those who have said, I'm surrendered to Jesus Christ. It's only for them. It's not for the world. It's only for his children. And there we need to come and say, yes, Lord, this is a place I need to get to. I need to get to be a place of being born again. I will go back to this later. But for you, it's about the kingdom of God. That is what God wants you to ponder about. Not that what is in your life. Now sickness has this thing. That it thinks you have. These thoughts are coming up in your mind. Sickness has a. Am I, am I going to die? Am I busy dying? This is what sickness normally does with you. And this is how the, the enemy works it. And he, and he wants to stir it up even more and more. And I think eventually you die of fear. Not of the sickness. That's what he normally works. He works you so, so, so hard that you will die of fear, basically. Your heart just can't handle it. So this is what we need to take care of in our lives. We need to take care of our souls. It's something the Lord wants us to do. Remember, he says, your body is the temple. Now the soul is part of your body. And we need to take care. We really make to have, to have to make work of this. There's a work for us, every single one of us. And this is his word for our lives. The second thing, fear wants to discourage you, wants to stop you from moving, wants to discourage you. It wants to drain you physically, emotionally, and spiritually. It wants just to drain you. That's what discouragement does. You basically come to a place of giving up. I've seen many Christians say eventually just give up. Say, I can't, I can't go with this anymore. I had my sister Eva the other day. She says, for how long, my brother, must I fight? I said, till you go to heaven. We don't stop fighting till we go to heaven. It's tiring. Don't give up. That's why we need each other to encourage each other. To uplift each other. Today I hope that faith will be stirred in our hearts. Faith. And we start trusting God again for our lives. Let's read Luke 21 verse 26. This is now a discouraged man. 
Men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. So there's fear coming. So they will be discouraged regarding the things that will come. The next thing, fear stops you having God's vision. You can have your own vision of life and you can have God's vision for your life. But still, fear will stop you from moving to that place where you will have God's vision for your life. The question is, do you know that God has a plan and a purpose for you? That is the question you need to ask for yourself. Do you know it? If you're not aware of it, then obviously you need to make a work of this. That God wants us to know. That calling he's placed upon you. That we start living it out. Whatever it may be. Whatever it may be. There's a calling on you. You're not just here. You're not just a mere person on earth. God qualified you. He qualified you. If you are here and you say today, I'm, I'm saved. You have been qualified by the Lord, the Most High. You've been qualified for a certain task in His kingdom. And I cannot do it for you and somebody else cannot do it. You need to do it. Stop disqualifying yourself. That discouragement stops you from moving. I want to really encourage you people that you really start rising up to your callings. And you know, one of those callings which the Lord has played off and that is say, go and make disciples. That is spoken to every child of God. Go and make disciples. It is not just for certain. It's not just for the elders or the pastors of this house. It is for everyone. It's to make disciples. I can just always ask them, who are you then discipling? Who are you discipling? Uh, is there a road you walk with somebody? It's a question. Or are you just living your selfish life? Or it's just about yourself? Nehemiah 6 verse 9, you will see. Let's read that. For they all made us afraid, saying, Their hands shall be weakened from the work that it be not done. I'm just going to stop there. So here, the people that were supposed to, to build up Jerusalem, they, they make them fear in such a way that they stopped. They wanted them to stop working. And this is what the devil wants. He wants you to stop working that what God has envisioned for you. He wants you to stop you there. He will not stop. And he will bring the falsest accusations against you to want you to make you stop. And one of those accusations is, I'm not good enough. I'm not able. Well, we will read Nehemiah says, and he said, Lord, then use my hands. Make them strong. Make my hands strong. That's what Nehemiah asked, Lord. Make my hands strong so that I will carry on doing it. So I'm asking that the Lord will make your heart strong, that you will carry on what you're called to do. That was number three. I want to go to him. the fourth thing. Fear makes you see things. Somehow, I've seen people, they have mental issues eventually. They see things which mean you don't see. <laughs> you don't. They see, they see this and they see this and they see this and they see a lot of things and we don't see it. I don't say that they're not always there, but it's, I, it seems like if the devil has been corrupting the imagination... Completely corrupting their imaginations. They start seeing things which are not true. I've seen many children of God and they start focusing only on darkness. Only. They only see darkness. They, they can see no good no more. They continuously want to come to you and tell you what they are seeing. I see the devil in this. and the devil. I don't say he's not in everything. But please. The Lord is above all this. Let us start seeing what he's doing. Let us see this. If you have gone into that place of depression where you only can see darkness, 
Or maybe you've gone to that place of schizophrenia where you start seeing different things and you hear voices speaking to you and all these things. You need to ask the Lord. Not seek men. Man cannot help. I saw, on Friday I saw a man, an elderly. He was a Catholic. And his son opened himself to some spiritual people and now the son is now living something that which he is not. You can see he's just manifesting all the time. And he's now, he calls himself a prophet from Nigeria. But he's just a normal son of somebody from a Catholic home. And he sees all these things, all these things. All, but he just sees darkness all the time. All these devils and all these things. He sees this. And I could see the father was really. And he said to me, I must be honest to you. I've tried everything with this son. I took him to the witch doctors. I took him to every psychiatrist and every psychologist you can, you know of in Namibia and he's now going to South Africa. And I said to him, you have to take him to Jesus. He is the only one that can help you. Not a man. Even myself, I cannot help you. I can pray with you, but we need to take him to Jesus and ask the Lord to set him free. See, this is the thing with humanity. We try everything until we come to a place where we basically, and maybe we have to first give up before the Lord starts stepping into our lives. But you start stop doing things. I've seen a, a lady who's struggling with spirits and she wants to war all the time. I said, why do you want to war them? The war is won. The battle is won. Just claim it for yourself. Tell those devils you have lost. It seems like if that's a deaf ear, that ear does not want to open. May God help us to open ears in this house. May he come and unplug people's ears. And remove those things that have been put in ears. Those recitations. It's always the same thing. It's like an LP that got hooked and it's always the same story, same story, same story. It never passes that story. It's just the same story all the time. It's like an LP. May it break. May we go from here. May we move toward what God has called us. Next one is Fear stops the spiritual gift in you. If you've received Jesus Christ as your Savior and the Holy Spirit, there's the full package of the gifts within you. It's there. It's on everybody. The Holy Spirit is the same. The same Holy Spirit which was in Jesus Christ is in you, me, in every one of us. That power which the Holy Spirit has and you work through Jesus Christ, that same power, everything is inside you. It's just the devil that knows how to hold that thing that you cannot move. He wants to keep you in that place of doubt and self-condemnation and fear, discouraged, so that the spirit cannot move. For he knows when the spirit starts moving, he's in trouble, he's in great trouble. Then you become dangerous for his kingdom. And that's why so many people are so, so scared of all these dark forces and things. Say, no, 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 I can't go. I'm not called to do that. Casting out demons. No, 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 no. It is not my job. It is for specialists. Which is a lie. He said, if you're his disciple, okay, if you're a disciple of Jesus Christ, you will cast out demons, heal the sick. That's what you've been doing. That's our job. It's not just for certain special, special prophets in this world or certain, certain, such, uh, certain healing people in this world. It is for every child of God. Oh, it's done by His Spirit. And we need to say, Lord, help me. Help me to come loose so that I can start moving again in my giftings. And then we will say, yes, but I only have the gift of praying in tongues. Well, that's one of the gifts. There are nine. You can exercise all of them. 
as God wants. Remember, I say, as God wants. It's not as you want, as God wants. If there's a time for certain miracles to happen and you are available at that moment, God will use you and he will do that miracle for you. Same with healing. He will do it. Or maybe the prophetic word that needs to come from you for that moment. But it's God's will yet. It's not our will. Matthew 25 verse 25 says it clearly. And I was afraid and I went to hit this talent in the earth. You can do it. You can hide God's talent, which is the Holy Spirit. You can hide it from people instead of exercising. I always say the Holy Spirit is like muscles that need to be exercised, which you don't know yet of. Maybe those core muscles, you know. We men, we don't know core muscles until we one day go to a place where we start trying to do core muscle exercises. We say, Ooh, problem. <laughs> Problems. Men, women have those most of the time, but we men, we struggle with core muscles. This is the same thing. It needs to be exercised. Holy Spirit wants you to exercise the gifts. It is that desire he has for you to experience the gifts, how sweet they are. See the working of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We cannot hold back in any form. We stop. We stop. We, every time we just quench the Holy Spirit in this, when we hold back, we should really step out and say, Lord, use me mightily again. May I see things happening wherever I go. The next thing is, it prevents you to move into your identity. Fear prevents you. You will not see yourself as a son of the living God. It will stop you. It will disqualify you. Every time fear will say, but who are you? Who do you think you are? I mean, it's also the demons will also ask you, who are you? It's normally what they normally ask. So who are you? Where you come from? Who told you you can cast me out? That's what they ask you. Stops your identity. We have an identity in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ has been given all authority over heaven and earth. In him we have authority. It's do we know that identity we have in him. It's us in him and him in us that gives us the identity, knowing that we are the sons of the living God. Romans 8 says, 15 says, For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you've received the spirit of adoption which is and cries out, Abba, Father. And this is what we need to realize in our lives. We, our God is alive and true. We need to stop believing the lies of the devil. He's continuously lying to you, making you think that God does not love you. You mean, he started that from a year, very young age. We have all gone through some form of rejection and abandonment, and whatever God, the, the devil tried in our lives. And the only thing he tried to stir inside us is fear. When you fear that some people will start rejecting you, he's got you. If you start fearing what people will do to you, he's got you. The people of this world have got no good plans for humanity. Believe me, brothers and sisters. They've got no good plans for any humanity. They say, yes, we want to help them. But their hearts are different. The only ones whose heart is different is that of the Lord. His heart is really to want to help you. He's the only one that has a heart to really want to help you. And you need to start trusting him again. When we go to 2 Kings 18, we read about King Hezekiah. And you will find he did things which was right in God's eyes. He went to destroy the things of his father and all those things which he's done. He's even tore down the... Um, the statue they've made, which Moses have made with the serpent, which they started worshipping. They started worshipping that thing that healed them. And in the old end, he did destruction to all of this thing. And what did he do? He put his trust in God. 
He started, he says, the word says, and he put his trust in God. That there was no king before or after him that had such trust. We need to get back to the place where we start trusting God again. Trust God for your healing. Trust God for your breakthrough. Trust him again. He can do it for you. You see, but we always should just look at this worldly things in our life. Instead of seeking for the spiritual things in our life. That's why it says, first seek my kingdom. First seek it and my righteousness. Once you found it, this is where you can start moving. And then he says, and then I will answer your heart's desire. But we first want our heart's desires to be answered before we come to the kingdom of God. May God help us with this. May he break it in us. May that selfish need and passion break in us. You will continuously feel worthless, always rejected. You will even think it's God destroying you. That's how, how the devil works. You will find eventually you are accusing God. God has done this. He has allowed this to come over my life. It is him that has destroyed me. That's how far he gets, the devil. Well, I will maybe not deny that God has more brought it a certain circumstance of your life, but for him it was not that you get destroyed. For him is that you got built up in this whole process. There was something you had to learn and not get destroyed. It's the devil that destroys you, make you believe those things. God wants to stir faith in us, trust in us. This is what God wants to stir in us. Last thing I want to deal with is the fear of the unknown dominates you. It dominates you. The fear of the unknown. Now it can be maybe dark forces. As you say, no, 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 I can't go here. Dark forces, oh no, this is, be careful. And one also can overdo it by going to find all of this and losing track in the whole thing. It's quite confusing the way the devil works. When you try and understand how he works is a difficult thing. For he works with confusion. Confusion is not a thing to really understand. We need the Holy Spirit in the process to help us. To do what? To discern. And that's again another gift. I need to trust God for your healing. Not myself. We want an ABC for healing. A, B, C, D, E, F. We do it for step one, and B, C, D. God does not work that way. He knows you. He knows your problems. It's first you surrender. You give over. You bring yourself in a place and say, Lord, I need you in my life more than ever. I'm dying. I need you. And your word says, your word says, I will not just merely live of bread alone, but out of every word that proceeds from your mouth, that is the promise for your life. That word which God speaks to you, that word you will live of, that word. Are you going to believe it or you're not going to believe it? And maybe you've heard a word many years back and you've forgotten that word. Remind yourself again of that word. There's somebody here in my spirit. I hear, I've given up. I've tried my best. I never had breakthrough. I've got a word for you. The Lord says, tonight, allow me to enter your heart. Allow me to enter your heart. I can change. I can change it for you. It's your heart that resists you. Your heart is hardened. I hope you hear me. The fear of the unknown will stop you in everything. Your professional life can stop you there. can stop you in your ministry. It can stop you in any form of your life. You can feel trapped there. You cannot come out of that. 
It's the unknown. And this is exactly the thing with the, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is also unknown. And we need to just surrender. The word clearly says you will never understand the Holy Spirit. You don't know where he comes from. He goes, he's like the wind. You will never understand the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit just wants to be your friend. And he wants you to allow him to work for you. That's all he wants. He doesn't want you to really understand him. Yes, you will become eventually your friend. You will hear him all the time talking to you. That's what he wants. He wants to talk to you. Are, are you allowing him? Are you, are, you, are you welcoming every day into your life? Say, good morning, Holy Spirit. How are you? Do you speak like that too? What does it fear want you to do? It wants you to stop fighting. First thing he wants to do, you stop fighting. Stop praying. He wants you to stop praying. First thing he wants to do in your life. And he quickly gets you to stop praying. Give up on prayer. See many Christians, give up on prayer. Stop praying. It's the first thing he wants you to stop. The second thing is, he wants you to go lie down. I need rest. I need time out. <laughs> time out, time out. Let me rather go to just be on my own. And that's where he gets you. There where you're on your own. Instead of you coming to church, instead of you seeking for fellow brothers and sisters for help, you want to go lie down. You want to go work it yourself. It's there the devil gets hold of you. That's where he works you. And when you find yourself, whew, all faith has left you. What does fear do? Chases out faith. It's the opposite of fear. It's faith. What does the Bible say? What should we do? 2 Timothy 1 verse 7 says clearly. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. But of power. And of love. And of a sound mind. So it means if there's fear in your life, there's a spirit you need to deal with. There's a spirit you need to make go in your life. I still remember there was a day when I was, in those days when Nova Vita was still here. And then they called me and they asked, I must please come, there's problems here. There's a big panic that has come up over the people. And when I got there, I found three big men together in one bed, <laughs> holding each other, and they are just crying. I was, oh, what do you see? What's wrong? No, tikoloshi, tikoloshi. Now there's Oshi, one more people, tikoloshi, tikoloshi. I said, Lord, open my eyes. I also want to see tikoloshi. And I saw, and it was just this big. And I said, are you so scared for such a small thing? Such so big. That's why they put their beds on bricks. Can't jump on the bed. It's just as big. This is fear. But he can bring big results. Big results. He'll freeze you. You will not move. You'll panic that you don't know yourself. That's what fear does in your life. But he's very small as a spirit. He's not mighty as we might think. I want to encourage you that you start chasing away that small one that is bringing fear to your life. Just say, you can go. You're just giving yourself to be great. You're not so great. How, does, how do we work it? We work it with love. Remember, what does fear do? What does love do? It casts out fear. You need to come to a place where you feel loved. You need to make work of love in your life. God loves you. And you need to receive that. You need to be able to receive it. And for us men, it's a difficult thing. For, it's not so, comes, does not come so easy for us. For women, it's a different thing. They, they function with this. We men, we are more different. And that's why it's so, so much harder for men to receive love. We need to ask, Lord, teach me. Your love. 
teach me. Sin. Sin will always teach you you're not worthy of that love. Always. That's why we need to stop doing sin. Stop. For sin will con condemn you. We need to break with this. And it's, it's 1 John 4 verse 18 says it clearly. For fear, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts it off fear. Because fear has torment in it. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. You are tormented by fear. May God help you. Then he talks about power. What is the power God speaks about? Acts 1 verse 8 says, it says it clearly what's the power of the Spirit. It says, but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. That is the power we need to resist fear by the power of the Holy Spirit. And then it talks about self-control or sound mind. Let's go to Romans 10 verse 17. Faith, faith builds this. Romans 10 17 says, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We need to work the word in our lives. Build faith in our hearts so that we can start standing fast. The mind can be I've seen people that believe all these lies. They believe. They believe this is thing is talking to them. And this is talking to them. And this is talk. And this is imaginations. That imagination of yours, you should ponder the word. You should use your imagination to ponder the word and God's thoughts and ideas for your life, not that of the devil. Don't entertain the devil. Stop entertaining the devil's thoughts for your life. The word actually says, every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, you need to take captive in your life. You need to bind it down and say, this is not for me. This is a lie. But we don't. We entertain those thoughts. And the devil starts saying, it's better you die. And now you start entertaining the thoughts of suicide. Eventually you will go there. If you start entertaining those thoughts. You should tell the devil, no, I will not die. I will live. For that's God's word for me. I chose him. And this is thoughts we need to work in ourselves. And that's why I tonight want to come to a place where you say, Lord, help me. And you know your fear in your life. And I'm sure there's, there's not anybody here that can say, there's nothing I fear. There's always something you might fear. For that is the devil has been working it since you've been born. He's been working in it in your life. To fear. But before we go there, if you've never given your heart to the Lord Jesus, if you've never surrendered to Jesus, and then it's the time to allow him to come to you, for it's him that wants to help you. It's him that wants to bring the change in your life. It's him that wants to deliver you. It's him that wants to heal you. It is him that wants to bring liberty to your life. And if you've never surrendered, never given over to him, remember, he is seeking for you. It's his love that calls out to you. It is his love that says, come to me, come to me, come to me. Nothing else. Nothing else. There's nothing we qualify for. There's nothing I can bring to qualify. It is his love that says, come to me. So that I can give you rest.